I know. watched it on TV. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. All right, so I want to I want to show you something uh, about election uh, workers and uh, the threats that they are receiving all across this country in Georgia, in Maine, in Michigan, in Ohio, in Missouri. Uh, some of them are, are going to uh, be, you know, uh, election uh, judging, you know, uh, uh, literally making sure things go smoothly behind bulletproof glass. Others of them are receiving powdery envelopes in the mail that are turning out to be nothing but uh, pretending to be anthrax or fentanyl, right? ABC News has learned that threatening letters containing white powder have been sent to election offices in at least 16 states. Among the states affected, New York and the battleground states of Georgia and Arizona. While sources say the powder in the letters has proven harmless, the letters have stoked security concerns as we head down the final stretch of the campaign. State election offices were evacuated in Kansas and Wyoming. And in Missouri, officials shut off the ventilation system for fear that the powdery substance might be toxic. Others warned of more to come that might be lethal. This latest incident marks the second time in the past year the suspicious mail has been sent to election offices. Last November, threatening letters were sent to offices in five states, four of which tested positive for fentanyl, which can be lethal even in tiny amounts. Mm. The National Association of Secretaries of State released a statement urging an end to threatening and intimidating actions toward election officials, saying there's no place for threats of political violence in our democracy. Sadly, a sign of our times a sign of our times so um obviously something is going on you i i show you all these things together uh the story of the victor orban shell company that was paying for hezbollah's pagers and then the pagers actually had each and every one of them somewhere along the supply chain whether they were when they were being manufactured or when they were being shipped or when they were being received we don't know but somewhere along the line someone put explosives that were explosive enough to uh you know not just take out the person who was wearing the beeper who had the beeper in their pocket or on their belt but also people near them that's a lot of explosives okay so somebody along the supply chain was able to do that kind of insertion and then make it so that you could uh you know trigger them all you could detonate them all with a code Okay, so that's kind of sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, technology, right? So that happened, uh, you know, uh, at the hands of uh, at least we know one autocrat uh, helping another. What do I mean by that? Well, Viktor Orban and Benjamin Netanyahu are both right wing, loony, fringy guys. Yeah, who have no problem, uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, killing people. No problem at all. And um, they sort of bonded and did this caper together from what we know now we're finding out that in springfield what yes stay with me in springfield ohio you remember yesterday i played you a clip of governor mike dewine the republican governor of ohio explaining that there were at least 33 separate bomb threats that were called into elementary schools, hospitals, universities, Department of Motor Vehicles, uh, you know, uh, 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 a cultural center, right? Turns out those threats are coming from overseas somewhere. Some foreign entity is threatening bombs would go off in Springfield, Ohio. And now we're finding out that there's these mysterious envelopes full of benign white powder that are being sent to election officials trying to intimidate the election officials or trying to create an environment where people will be afraid to go vote in places like Ohio, Maine, Michigan, Georgia. You see what I'm saying? So... There seems to be a lot of cooperation going on in this world uh, between people like, oh, I don't know, Viktor Orban, Donald Trump, who loves him. He can't speak of him highly enough or often enough. 
uh, Vladimir Putin, who Donald Trump worships. And Benjamin Netanyahu, all right-wing autocrats, all people that have impetus to do really bad things to keep themselves out of jail. You know this whole thing with Netanyahu, and I, when I said this at first, people were like, how could you just blame him and not blame the whole you know, history of uh, you know, this place? Because it is him, okay? It's him. And he's been around for a lot longer than you might know or, or want to know. And these people from, uh, from, from, from these countries uh, that have gone full tilt right wing where Netanyahu's trying to keep himself out of jail. Remember, Netanyahu was about to uh, stand trial for fraud, right? His wife, too. Donald Trump was uh, found guilty of fraud 34 times to the point where yesterday I had to point out that, you know, Donald Trump can't join the military. They wouldn't take him. They wouldn't accept him. But he can be commander in chief. Do you see how that's off? You see how that's odd? You see how that puts us in a very, uh, you know, ridiculous situation? You get that, right? Well, it's the same thing with Netanyahu, okay? He was trying to dismantle the Supreme Court of Israel because he didn't want to stand trial. He didn't, want, he didn't like their decision that he should stand trial, that he should meet the bar of justice, and he should, uh, you know, defend himself if he's done nothing. And so, and there were, there were months and months of protests there by people who wanted him to cut the crap, right? And then they were attacked, and then they were attacked, and 2,500 people died in like a morning, right? You know, you got to kind of, you know, pay attention to what's really underneath these, these, these lunatics, okay? Like, what is their, uh, what, what, what is their purpose for, for creating, uh, you know, uh, an environment where, you know, people don't want to change horses in midstream? See, and, and when you look at all this foreign interference that is occurring, all these bomb threats against Haitians, innocent people who are here legally with a live assist from the likes of uh, Jimmy D. Vance, okay? James David. I learned this from listening to Joy Reid. She calls him James David. I call him Jimmy D. now. Uh, saying things like um, they're here illegally and they've been dumped in Springfield by Kamala Harris. I mean, all these lies. And for what? Like, what? Why? Why would they be telling these kinds of lies that would obviously lead to some sort of fear in the community that they are the senator for? Do you know what I mean? It's like the first time I've ever seen a senator betray his own state. Why would you do that? That's what Netanyahu is doing. He's betraying his own state. He's betraying his own country. He's making them a pariah in the world. It's what Donald Trump did to us. Made us a pariah in the world, a laughingstock in the world. This is why NATO was so relieved when Joe Biden won. And Kamala told him that at the debate. The world knows he's a lunatic. They understand that he will sell out his own country for the high price of flattery. That's the, the price he charges. Just flatter him and he'll do whatever. That's how, that's how lunatic he is. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.